All right, thank you everyone very much, Eparistopoli. I'm honored to be with you today as we celebrate the 196th anniversary of Greek independence. This day, this day marks the 31st celebration of Greek independence here at the White House, a tradition started by the great president, Ronald Reagan. As a proud Greek American, I've had my eye on this event for weeks, and I'm grateful to welcome His Eminence Archbishop Demetrios, Father Alex, and all of our distinguished guests. I'd also like to extend my sincere gratitude to the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America and our local parishioners. Greek Independence Day means so much to all of us. As we gather here in the President's House, we are reminded of the values and ideals that inspired our democracy the belief that we're all created equal and government should be by the people and for the people was a revolutionary concept that has since paved the way to our prosperous and free nation. Today, as we celebrate our shared desires for freedom, sovereignty, and self-governance, I can tell you that nobody will work harder to preserve these standards than President Donald Trump. In working with this president every day, I see a president working each and every day to follow through on his promises. I'm awed by his energy and his tenacity. Throughout my career, I've always been able to outwork any, of, any people around me. It's always been my secret weapon. But I must say, I have totally found my match in President Trump. Oxios, right? <laughs> In just a few short months, I think you've seen President Trump keep his word on many fronts. The first two jobs reports released since President Trump's inauguration show that we've already created nearly a half a million new jobs. Consumers and small business owners alike are showing confidence in our economy at levels not seen in many, many years, and it's because of President Trump. The President's commitment to cutting regulations cutting taxes, investing in priorities like infrastructure and education, and repealing and replacing the failed Obamacare is getting America moving again. As we find new, renewed strength at home, our friends abroad will find us to be even a stronger ally. The President knows just how important our enduring allies are, and Greece is no exception. That is truly why it is such an incredible honor on this day as a Greek American to introduce to you the 45th President of the United States, ladies and gentlemen, President Donald J. Trump. I love the Greeks. Oh, do I love the Greeks. <laughs> Don't forget, I come, I come from New York. That's all I see is Greeks. They are all over the place. Thank you very much, Reince. Very much appreciated. Reince was the most successful leader, the RNC, that's called the Republican National Committee, has ever had. And now, as my really terrific and hardworking Chief of Staff, he has really one of the number one — and I guess you'd have to say he's one of the top Greeks in the country. And I know a lot of them right in the audience are my friends. And uh, the list also includes, as you know, George Chijikos. George! Uh, George is great. I said, make sure that microphone is absolutely perfect, George. He never lets me. The director of White House Advance. And George Sifakis was George. And these guys are with me right from the beginning. The Director of Office of Public Liaison. It's a great team. It's a great, great team. Can't do any better. They helped organize this wonderful event with the Greek Archdiocese of America and so many local parishioners. And I want to thank you all. You're here. You're all over the audience. I want to thank you all. Your Eminence and Father Alex 
It is a true privilege to host you at the White House. I was deeply honored to have you both at my inauguration. It's a great day. And I am grateful for your presence here today. I also want to thank you for awarding Reince and George the highest honor of the Greek, Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, the Medal of St. Paul. To everyone in your youth choir who just performed, they were beautiful. I heard that music. I heard that music with such elegance and grace. You're amazing. You really are. Beautiful, beautiful sounds. I know you made your parents very proud, and you make all of us proud, right? Today, we commemorate an event that we have marked with a national day of celebration for 30 years, Greek Independence Day. Very important. President Ronald Reagan started this wonderful tradition, and we are thrilled to continue it, and always will. Greek Independence Day celebrates the rebirth of liberty for the Greek people. It commemorates the fight for the Greek independence that began on March 25, 1821. After nearly 400 years of outside rule, the Greeks long to regain their sovereignty. This love of freedom and democracy has formed a lasting bond between our two countries. It is a bond that has its origins in ancient Greece, the birthplace of democracy. American President James Monroe and the great American statesman Daniel Webster both supported Greece's struggle for independence. And it was a tough, tough struggle. You know that. Then Representative Webster honored the role of Greece in forming civilization and said that we, like the rest of mankind, are greatly her debtors. In years to come, we don't know what will be required to defend our freedom. But we do know that it will demand great, great courage, a courage from all of us. And we will show it, and I have no doubt about that. Drawing inspiration from our history and those who come before, we will rise to any occasion. We have a country that, as you know, has certain difficulties, has certain problems. We will solve those problems, and we will quickly solve those difficulties. Just watch. I want to thank you all for coming to the White House today. We celebrate Greek history, and we applaud the tremendous contributions of your people to our beloved country. May God bless you all. And with that, I would like to recognize His Eminence. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, following a tradition established many years ago, we have the distinct honor and special privilege to be once again at the White House on the occasion of the celebration of the Greek Independence Day. We are deeply grateful as the Greek Orthodox American community for such a recognition and for your kindness, Mr. President, to sign the proclamation that pays tribute to the historic 1821 Greek Revolution, a revolution led to the liberation of Greece after four centuries of bitter conditions under the very painful occupation and rule of the Ottoman Empire. America has been connected to Greece in a special way even before the revolution of 1821 and the creation of Greece as an independent state. Allow me to share with you an example 
of how far back this strong bond extends. Most people, when asked the question, what was America's first war on foreign soil, have no answer. The answer is the Barbary Wars of 1805, when Thomas Jefferson was president. At that time, President Jefferson sent Special Envoy General William Eaton on a secret mission to stop the Barbary pirates who were demanding tribute from ships traveling the north part of Africa close to contemporary Libya. At 2 p.m. on April 27, 1805, General Eaton, leading an attack force of seven United States Marines and 26 Greek recruits, as well as 24 European mercenaries, advanced victoriously on the city of Tripoli, Libya. In this battle, Greeks who signed on an oath to protect and defend the United States of America, led by Captain Constantinos Lucas, fought side by side with the American Marines, and many fell heroically on the battlefield. Then we should remember the, that Greece, with the United States, fought on the side of democracy and against tyranny in two big world wars, and then in the Korean War, where the soldiers of the Greek Sparta Battalion were among the many Greek and Greek Americans who sacrificed their lives and received US congressional citations. More recently, together, we suffered unspeakable tragedies, especially in the terrorist attack on September 11, 2001, a victim of which was also our St. Nicholas Church in Ground Zero. Yet, determined to overcome any adversity and proving that the spirit of freedom is victorious over evil, we are rebuilding together. And with the help of God, the Almighty God, the, in the World Trade Center, part of which raised from the ashes is the new St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church and the National Shrine, a symbol of hope and victory against evil and barbarism. Through history, both our nations have exercised their uncompromised right to break the yoke of tyranny and to recover the priceless gift of self-governance and independence. All the more, this has been a central focus in defense and in protection and promotion of the supreme value of the religious freedom. During our very historic meetings in this White House, we repeatedly have indicated painfully how the ideas of independence and religious freedom unfortunately apply to special situations related to our ecumenical patriarchate, to Cyprus, and to Pharaoh. Today, however, allow me, Mr. President, <coughs> Mr. Vice President, to offer in addition a strong plea for the very country where the revolution of 1821 occurred. Greece is this country, a faithful, uncompromising, and dedicated ally of the United States who remained valiant despite demanding and life-sacrificing conditions in numerous wars in which the United States had been involved. Yet Greece, 
this very special ally of the United States has been at least for the last five to six years in a continuing financial ordeal and affliction. On this occasion, the people of Greece, and I am speaking from personal experience, remember very well the decisive impact on Europe and especially Greece of both the Marshall Plan and the Truman Doctrine. We know and are deeply grateful to the United States of America, which saved a devastated Europe after the Second World War. The contribution of America was truly monumental, helping to restore financially a war-ravaged Europe. Today, compared to the gigantic assistance needed for Europe after World War II, a significantly less assistance is needed for Greece to recuperate financially and function again as a dynamic state. By doing so, by assisting, the possibility will be given to Greece to resume and continue a vital role as a faithful ally and a nation that produces waves of succeeding cultures and civilizations for 6,000 years. On this day of, on this day of Greek independence, we fervently pray that God put an end to the ordeal of Greece, the mother of democracy, culture, philosophy, science, and even a model of philanthropy towards the hundreds of thousands of refugees. We ask for peace in our wounded world, we pray intensely for the United States of America, the staunch defender of freedom and justice for all, for the noble first family, the president and the vice president of the United States, and for all the people who are in need for divine and human assistance. We pray and we believe. We pray and we hope. We pray and we are in grateful anticipation of your positive initiative. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Bravo.